Somebody wave to the Lord, amen. Where's the mic where you sing? Come on, wave to the Lord in Jesus' mighty name. Glory. Glory. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Jesus. Who is like you, Jehovah? From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Forever, you are God. Somebody, wherever you are, begin to celebrate Jesus. Begin to praise his name. Begin to celebrate Jesus tonight. Praise his holy name. Who is like unto our God? Somebody, begin to praise our Lord. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Oh yeah, we appreciate this life. This life. We appreciate this life. Amen. Come on, somebody. Let's appreciate this life. In Jesus' name. Oh, my God. My God. There are people in the hospitals. There are people in prisons. There are people behind bars. They begin to appreciate this life. That God has given away. Whatever two or three God of God is in our mix, begin to bless the Lord. What blessing? Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Jehovah is your name. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says he sent his word. The, 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 the other mic was sounding better than this mic. I didn't see Rich. I said I need the other mic because this mic got some stuff in it. She got a feedback. Hallelujah. Okay, just raise the one. Oh, this better. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. The mic had a sunk in Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Father, we bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. Holy, holy is your name. It's deep. We have to pray for Israel. The peace of Jerusalem. War is not true. People lose property, they lose their life. And there is war. Let us begin to just pray for Israel once more time. And the Bible said this, that pray for Israel, God will bless them. Come on. Begin to just pray for Israel. Prayer works. Prayer is the key. Prayer is what we do. When you pray, God hear your prayers. Father, we thank you for Israel healing, deliverance. Someone is displaced tonight. Someone don't have place to stay, Lord. Someone don't have place to stay tonight. We ask you to bless Israel, Jesus. Open your mouth, begin to pray in Israel. Hey, Santa Yabahaya. Repo Papa Parabaka Yaba. Every Santana plan. Every demonic plan again, Israel. Lord, we, we stand as a church, one church. We stand as one church, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we send prayer in the atmosphere. On behalf of Israel, oh God of heaven, God who created the heaven and the universe, we stand as one people, we stand as a church, oh God, even though Israel don't know us, though that we pray for don't know us, but you know us, though, that we are here. You said in your word, whatever two or three gather, you are there in their midst. Father, thank you. We come against every act of disobedience tonight. Oh, we stand in the gap to pray for Israel. Somebody open your mouth, begin to pray never before. Pray for Israel.
Let us pray for Ezra. Let us pray for Ezra. Everybody raise your voice. Raise your voice. Somebody raise your voice. Let us raise our voice tonight and cry. Somebody child is in pain. Somebody don't have place to stay. It's not about your money. It's not about your house. It's not about the car you drive. It's about this life. Open your mouth. Begin to pray for Israel. As you pray for Israel, God is doing something for your life. God is doing something great. Hey, Father, we thank you for the peace of Israel. Everyone I go against Please, oh God, rise, rise, oh God. Ah, pray from your belly, pray from your inside of you. Pray for the better cry for Israel tonight. Let us begin to pray for this. In the name of Jesus. Let there be peace. Let there be peace in Israel. Let there be peace in Israel now. The command cease fire in Israel. Every penetrators, every conspirators, every demonic influence, we bound it tonight. According to the word of God, whatever we bound on earth is born in heaven. Oh, whatever we bound to the beginning of bar, every Santa influence in Israel and everywhere around the world where there is no peace pray oh God in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus thank you Lord in Jesus name Father we ask you tonight oh God, to intervene on an unexpected attack on Israel life that was lost life that was displaced we ask you tonight in the name of Jesus Lord. you say whatever we bound on earth is bound in heaven Amen. you are not a man to lie oh God or son of Amen. whatever you say you will do all power belong to you all glory and honor belong to you oh my God my Lord in heaven look down upon us as your people that you are made with your hands. Your people that you created in your image. Do not let the enemies are with us, Lord. Do not let the enemies are with us, Lord. Arise, oh God. Let any enemy scatter us. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We got the victory. Amen. Nobody heard me. I said, we got the victory. Amen. We got the victory. Whenever we pray, we got the victory. The enemy will never win. Whatever you are going through in your life, I come tonight to tell you that you will win. And you will win big. You will win strong. In the name of Jesus. Every day is not for everybody, but one day for somebody. Every day may not be for you. But one day for you. Amen. Today is your day. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We want to bless the Lord for everyone. Come on, take your seat. Fire the ball, put some part of the power. Amen. Amen. I want to bless God for the leadership of the church, for holding the church down until I'm here. Bless the Lord for everyone that you lead us, especially my wife. Bless the Lord for her, for such a, a great woman of God. We so great insight in the world that God has plenty on the inside of her. We just want to bless the Lord for such a faithful, dynamic, and domesticated wife that God has given unto his servant, the prophet. Bless the Lord. Amen. I do appreciate you. And I appreciate all the pastors that God has sent to go against the universal church of God, the city of light. Bless the Lord for all the deacons and deaconess for your commitment. You know, I was coming, and uh, every time I fly, and uh, I get 
direct messages from God himself. What I'm sitting in a plane, God began to tell me a whole lot of things. When I got here, I didn't sleep all night. I was telling my wife some of the things that God was telling me. It was so strong. It was so powerful. First of all, God told me that life is too short on earth. Even if you live 100 years, it's too short. So we should start playing church. We should start being deceived. Many of all we live, we are very, very, you know, corny. You know, we full of deceptions and uh, we're not really seeing God the way we should. You know, so God told me to tell us that uh, we should get rid of deceit. Amen. And serve Him because life is too short. You think life, there are people that started with you, they are no longer with you. They are never with you, they are no longer with you. And we still play church. Amen. I don't joke. I don't play church. Amen. God told me commitment is what he look at. Welcome, my good and faithful servant. It pain me so much when I see people who call the name of God. And we are not faithful. <laughs> I don't want to really uh, jump the gum or make people ahead of me because there are a lot of messages God been giving me. But I want to bless God for the successful trip from here to Africa. Then bike, bless the Lord, Amen. Amen. Lives were transformed. Amen. God changed lives, and it was so powerful. Amen. The prophetic word was so sharp and so powerful. And bless the Lord, Amen. They sent two separate in a pastor office. He didn't know. Pastor that came from other times got a church in Nima, somewhere in Nima, there's somewhere in our county, one of those counties. And uh, S. Webb sent two separate in his office to kill him. God sent me there to rescue him. Prophesied to him, told him about the snakes, and those snakes was dead. They killed them. Wow. And uh, all what the pastor was so appreciated, he said, God sent you here for me. For you to come here. Why in case you was not going to be here? Those snakes will go two snakes sent to his office by his ex-wife. And he was delivered. Hallelujah. Well, thank you. There is a white guy came from Ohio by the name of Johnny Wright. Maybe you can look him up on Facebook. His name is Johnny Wright. G O N N Y R I C E. He went as a missionary to Liberia and they be wishing. They wishing. They put a witchcraft on him. God sent me there. I preached to the church and uh, I told him who did it to him. I called two female names and where he was living. He was so astonished. Couldn't wait to see me to sit down with me. I'm telling the honest truth. Looking up on Facebook, so excited. He get poor missionary Johnny Rice. You will see the camera put a wish cry on him. God sent me there to deliver him two ladies. You know, I mean, wish cry don't know color. <laughs> I mean, I was like, hey, what, man? I mean, you tired with our people now. You extending it to a white man. And it caused him to divorce his wife. Terrible things happen. We hear play with church, play with God. You feel that you come. You don't feel that you don't come. Somebody make you unhappy in church, you stay home. I don't know what kind of God you serve and what kind of God you love. I'm so, it's so, it's so sympathetic. Hallelujah. I'm praying that God will help us in these last days. The moment somebody says something to us, we don't come to church. Let if to say the church is for our friends or for our, you know, kind of like people don't know. But I pray that God will bring you back to your first love in Jesus' name. Amen. Such a great anointing I owe my life. It's so much in demand around the world. People, I mean, I'm not saying it because I'm anointed. I'm saying it because what God told me. That I'm harder than anointed to break your to every situation, God will raise up a David to every situation. 
To every Goliath, there will be a David. So if you don't find your David, the Goliath will mean in your life. To every David, there is a Goliath. To every Goliath, there is a David. Amen. Amen. So we need to be committed. There is nothing you can bring in church worth the thing that God can do for you. There is no amount of money. There is no amount of gift, time, offering, seed, sowing is compared to what God is giving. Even 20 million is not worth one day of living. Amen. Hallelujah. A man that is dying right now, and they ask him to pay 10 million that are even having to live for tomorrow, he will pay it. Because in that period of time, until tomorrow, he want to say certain things, he want to do certain things. So if death were to charge him a day, a price for one life to live a day, if death were to come and charge you, say, pay me this amount just for tomorrow. If you have it, you will pay. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at how God pleases. God said, your soul, the price of your soul, don't even worth the whole world. So your life, if, if you combine the whole world, not just country that politicians are fighting for, just a, get the whole world, your soul worth more than a whole world. Can you imagine? The Bible tells us that. Hmm? What can a man give you a chain of his soul? Hallelujah. The Bible says your whole world. Satan needs your soul. He's willing to pay a price for your soul. In Jesus' mighty name. Why the man want to gain the whole world and loses his soul? Jesus placed it this way. How can you gain the whole world and lose your soul? Amen. You want the whole world, not just say little word, but the whole world. Amen. I want us tonight to think about it. Let us be very focused. Let us be very committed. Let God continue to use us. I will tell you more things in time to come. Some of the things that God revealed to me, I will begin to unfold them in time to come. But tonight we want to Bless the Lord for one of our brother who is in your midst. Hallelujah. And his wife. Amen. Hallelujah. He's a uh, big church, Goshen University Church of God, a city of life. He got a branch in North Dakota. He's the pastor for that branch. Amen. Amen. He's from our brother church, amen, sister church. Amen. Uh, Bishop Cohen is the bishop for that church, bishop for the church, bishop for church in Liberia and other places, amen, and uh, also in New Jersey. So bishop have a church here, New Jersey, and North Dakota that he presides over. And he's one of the pastors here. It's beautiful where they are here. Hallelujah. Amen. From all the way, North Dakota, Church of God, City of Life. Pastor George Jala is here in one minute. He is the product, direct product of Bishop John Kong Kong. Amen. He's here in Jesus' name. He got here sent 10 a.m. this morning, went to my house, gave him some tea to drink, and he drank tea, and he went back to the hotel. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I just love him. He's a praiser. Very powerful praiser, delivering minister, and a pastor. Bless the Lord for you. Amen. He's married to that girl over there. Amen. You know, when I was at the church a few time ago, I was there with Bishop, and I want to go push for their anniversary, one-year anniversary. So uh, his wife don't know the heat that church got. She just getting into it. So I was sitting with her talking. She said, if you were going to tell me you're going to be pastor, I don't think I'm going to change my mind. Amen. <laughs> she said, it's not easy to be a pastor wife. Amen. He didn't tell me you're going to be a pastor. I said, welcome. No retreat. You are there forever. <laughs> they said, it's a uh, church force. When church force finish, he know you. Oh, my goodness. Church force. They are hell of a people. Yeah, sweet people. Amen. I was checking on the internet. A lot of churches closed down every day. 
church will close down every day. There's a pastor who says he's done with church. God will never call him anymore. If God calls him, he will not answer. I read it and I said, oh, wow. And he has, you know, brute size of church. He said he done. Because they kind of, you know, he's got a heartbreak from his secretary resigned after being with 16 years and resigned because of, I mean, it's just so much, man. You know, it's very terrible to grieve your pastor. It will not be profitable for you. We just want to bless the Lord for some pastor who are still standing. Bless the Lord for you, y'all. God bless you. Amen. And not easy. Pastors, Moses, Pastor Moses, many times he wanted to commit suicide to die because of church folks. He even went into error because of church folks. He would say, God, I want you. He prayed, he prayed to die. And God said, keep him. So it's not easy. People of God, amen. There are many snakes that come to church pretend to be sh sheep. But there are some snakes. And I came, your bishop is watching, I just mentioned his name, he's watching. Give it off our bishop, bishop John Kunku, amen, amen, amen. Yeah, that's what I was saying, you know. He's a bishop for the church, bishop for another church, North Dakota, bishop for the church in New Jersey. Just a nice man, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. So we just want to bless God for Pastor George. Tonight he's going to come and bless us. Put your hand together. Welcome. Pastor, my own brother. Amen. Pastor John Kuti Jala. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You can have your seat. We want to bless God for such an opportunity giving us to come and minister to you guys today. I want to bless God for a safe arrival from North Dakota. I think he already introduced us. My wife is, my beautiful wife is over there. You know, we, we kind of follow the full step of our daddy, Bishop Kong. Yeah, so he, she's a wonderful wife. And with everything Prophet said, she still recognized that she has a calling. And it is not a mistake she married to me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And I also want to take the opportunity to recognize the Prophet in the house. Put your hands together for Prophet. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. If, if can you just lower it a little bit? Because some of prayer guys, some of voice, when I put strength in there, it's gonna go above. Then we hear myself. Praise the Lord. And I want to appreciate the first lady in the house. Put your hands together for the first lady. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And I also want to thank God for the leadership. The leadership of this church, the level the church is, is because of your leadership ability. By raising up the hands of the prophet and making sure that the plan and purpose of God for this ministry come to fruition. God will bless you for continuing your good work in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And I also want to say to every one of you, it is no mistake you are here. You are divinely positioned for a divine encounter. Amen. Hallelujah. I always make this statement that God has places, but places to have God. That's why you need to be sensitive to know where you are. When God created the garden, the Bible says he created a place. In the eastward part of the garden, so that he may have intimacy with men. Hallelujah. It's not like there were no other places in the Garden of Eden, but he chose the eastward part of the garden. 
And that's why he decided to come down at the cool of the day. It is no need of you running all over the place. The first thing you need to do is to recognize where the presence is. You don't come to church for first lady, not of the prophet. But you come to experience the presence. What we call the Shekinah glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It wasn't Mary alone that was a virgin in her time and season. God chose Mary to bring the Savior. Hallelujah. That's why you have the prophet because God had chosen him. So he can channel blessing to you. He can fulfill his in and objective, the purpose concerning your life. Hallelujah. That's why God has allowed you to sit on him. Praise the Lord. I always tell my people, you don't come to church for Pastor John. As I'm standing right now, the Lord is going to use me to be a blessing unto you because he has chosen me to do so. Because of you. So when you come, come to him with an open heart, a heart of expectancy to receive that will bring a change in your life and your generation. Put your hands together for Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just stand in the field. Let us worship God a little bit. Mm. Bless the Lord. Oh my soul. And all that is with Bless the Lord, and oh my soul, and oh, bless his soul, his soul, bless the Lord. Santa, he 
great things. Oh, Makasata Yamaba. Oh, Mokaredo the Lord is here. <laughs> oh, Makaria Nasindo. Libri Iana Sando or Rick is good to Ria. Ria, oh, yes, it to Ria. Oh, God. Mm. Mm. Today is going to mark a memorial in your life. Today is going to mark a memorial in your life. I see a divine turn around. A divine turn around. A divine turn around. Libra do sanda. Libri kaskata ya labasato. Renashita ya Take it, take it, take it. There's a power. Receive it now. Read so to Li Karadado Sata. Li Karadado Sata. Akasata Yababa. Something is happening. Something is happening. Something is happening. Oh my God. Oh my God. The Holy Ghost is all over this place. Oh my God. Yes, yes, yes. The Holy Ghost is here. Yes, 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 yes. Oh my God, oh my God. Something is happening. Oh my God. Marco Satoria. Jata ya da 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 da. Marco Sandere do Sandere do. Rama baba. In number Sandere de Shika ya baba. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. In name of Jesus. of your power the sick shall be healed the bond will be loose and the oppressed will be set free in the name of Jesus Christ Father we thank you Lord breathe upon your word let your word give entrance that the same part will receive understanding let your word oh God illuminate every darkness in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, manifest yourself. Manifest yourself in this place. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Take all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, you can have your seat. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Paul said, if you want to desire a gift, desire the prophetic gift. Even though they are apostles, but he said, desire the prophetic gift. If you are sitting on a prophet, you are blessed. Hallelujah. Mother, the reason why dreams and vision doesn't come to pass because there is no interpreter. Hallelujah. Every one of you see there, you have a dream before, you have a vision, but you cannot interpret your vision in a dream. But what makes Joseph to fulfill his own dream because he was an interpreter. It is the interpretation of your dream that brings you to the level of fulfillment. Promotion comes through interpretation. Daniel was in Babylon, 
But when he interpreted the dream of the king, he placed it in the place of prominence. Joseph was despised and put into prison later on. But when he did interpret the dream of Pharaoh, he became the prime minister. Joseph's dream wouldn't have come to pass if he wouldn't interpret his own dream. Our fulfillment in life depends on the interpretation of our dreams. You can have a dream that you'll be the president of America. If you don't interpret it, it cannot come to pass. You know, matter of what I want to teach on, but I'm just like trying to. Now, the thing about it, this is what the devil does. The devil knows that God will always reveal to us or speak to us so that our life can be fulfilled. So he comes to manipulate dreams. Because there are three sources of dream. Demon source, satanic source, and the godly source. So the devil will come and manipulate your dream that you cannot even remember. So if you cannot remember your dream, how can you interpret the dream? Praise be to God. But today I want to, t I want to teach us, you know, deliverance, you don't preach deliverance. You know, when you give it information, you teach. Hallelujah. Amen. You teach. But sometimes I'm not a teacher. <laughs> a critical, you know, in a preaching way. But today I want to speak to us on the topic, deep with the spiritual battles by information. Dealing with spiritual battle by information. Hallelujah. Amen. When we talk about information, we are speaking of knowledge. Hallelujah. Amen. There are many of us today we are fighting the battle of life, but we don't have an information how to fight the battle of life. So we are fighting a losing battle. That every time we feel despised, rejected, and we think that God doesn't care about us. It is not that it is not so, it's because we lack an information of the battle we fight. Turn your Bible to Daniel chapter 9. Let us begin reading from verse 2. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by book. The numbers of years in captivity should be 70. Hallelujah. Daniel understood by what? By book. And listen to me. Daniel received information about the year that the children of Israel should spend in captivity. And the prophecy that was given was given 600 B.C. But Jeremiah, because of the disobedience of the children of Israel, God took them in captivity. And the prophecy that came through Jeremiah, the Bible says that Jer God spoke to Jeremiah, tell the children of Israel that I will take them into captivity for 70 years. Listen to me. Anything that has age, it has aspiration. Yeah. 
Hallelujah. The time that was attached to the captivity was how many years? 70 years. 70 years. There are people seated today in on the sound of my voice. There is a judgment that people have put upon you that is attached to age and time. But for that judgment to roll away, it requires information. So Daniel understood by what? By book. That the years in captivity, the number of years in captivity should be 70 years. That after the 70 years is over, you should be out of captivity. Hallelujah. Amen. God told Abraham, that the chain of Israel was going into Egypt for how many years? 400 years. Because of the lack of information, they stayed 430 years in captivity. It took God sending a savior, a deliverer. Daniel understood by both. Daniel was simply saying, I have received information that our being in captivity is over. We cannot continue to be a slave where our freedom has already been given. Amen. Hallelujah. It's like Jesus Christ being wounded for our transgression bruised for our iniquity, the chastisement of our peace is upon him, that by his strap we were healed, but we are professing we are sick. Listen to me. The information that you have or you receive and the word that you have in you is what the Holy Ghost will use to heal. Jesus told the lady with the 12 years of issues of blood. He said, woman, your faith. Because the thing is, it was a word that healed her. She said, if I can touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. Hallelujah. She received a word. It wasn't anyone telling her what to do. But it was from a serf. She received the word and said, If I can touch the hem of his coming, I will be made whole. And when she went and touched Jesus' garment, the Bible says, Jesus looked in her face and said, What oh, your faith has made you whole. In other words, the word that made you whole. Because faith come by the word. That was the Bible says faith come by hearing and hearing of the word. Labasata. If you are lacking the word. Oh my God. You bring delays to miracle. Hallelujah. If you lacking the word. You bring delay to deliverance. Hallelujah. You see it was by understanding that Daniel knew that their captivity was over. So he knew it was time for deliverance. Nothing can stop the deliverance of that return of Asia because Daniel already understood that it was time to get out. Nothing can stop them. Are you hearing what I'm saying, somebody? When you are going through situations, though it may stay a long time, but I tell you, my brother, because they have time, there is expiration, and the Lord will bring it out because it has time. Are you understanding me? So Daniel understood that his captivity, his trouble, the bondage as a slave was over. The king could not stop them. Hallelujah. Nobody could stop them. Nobody could oppose them. Because the time has come. 
and the set time has come. So no one could stop them from getting out. No matter what the devil would do or whatever the king do, they couldn't stop them from coming out because the time was over. Somebody say it is over. It is over. That devil that been suppressing you, tell you it is over. That nightmare that visit you by night, tell the land that it is over. Hallelujah. That sickness that been inflicting you, that you cannot have peace. Tell it is over. Somebody say it is over. That single hood is broken. Somebody say it is over. It is over. Hallelujah. Enough is enough. They have been doing too much. We've been going through a lot. But a set time has come. The set time has come. The Bible said when the fullness of time came out, God could not hold back Jesus. He sent for his son because it was a time. Sit down. Praise the Lord. Information. So every battle, you need information. Let's just look at uh, the United States Army. What makes the United States Army to succeed when it go into battle because of information? In every battle, you need to know the position of your enemy. Every battle, you need to know who is your enemy. Listen to me, it is not your mom or your aunt or anyone is your enemy. Your enemy is the devil. He manifests himself in them to do what they are doing. So he makes you to take your focus from on him. That is the reason why you are praying against people in your life and they are still living. You feel they are responsible. You have prayed and released judgment upon them. That they should die. But they are living. Because they are not your enemy. It is a spirit that is responsible. The Bible will speak of the spirit of jealousy. The Bible did not say a human jealousy. A spirit of what? Jealousy. A spirit of drunkenness, a spirit of fornication, a spirit of lies. So it is the spirit that we deal with. Hallelujah. Information places you in a better position to defeat your enemy. Daniel understood by book. So with everything the king was doing, he could not stop them. You know, when you receive the truth, nobody can suppress the truth. Deliverance come by truth. Deliverance come by knowledge. I got an illustration I always give when I talk about deliverance and knowledge. It's like when you have a one-year-old kid. And they start to walk around. And let's imagine you live in a house like Prophet House. You want to kind of stop him from coming, he or she, from coming down. You're going to put a gate before them. But now, listen to me. Because they are one year old and they have not grown in knowledge, they will get stuck up behind and cry. There are people today standing and crying. You know the reason why? They have not grown in knowledge. That baby was standing and crying. Maybe one year. But when that baby gets to three years, it's not going to cry no more. It's going to find a way to run that thing. Either jump over it or put it away. Hallelujah. Because the baby have grown up in knowledge. You cannot suppress the baby for not going down the step freedom no more. They will even slap their butt boom. Running down. And you cannot stop them. Are you understand what I'm saying? It's because they are receiving information. 
that to get around this thing is to put it or throw it on the side and run down. And the next thing, if you are their parent, you'll be thinking of doing another thing. But as time goes by, they grow up in it, they're also going to leave that position in life. You see, information is important. Information is important. So Bible says, Daniel, receive information by the book. The book is speaking of is the constitution, the Bible. Hallelujah. It's what he received information. That Jere even though Jeremiah prophesied that we were go in captivity, but there was a time interval that was attached to it that we could come out. But you see, many of us today, we forget to know the time that is attached to what we're going through. Hallelujah. The bad, the information you receive, it helps to destroy the enemies. Your enemy has strategies. Your enemy has positions. Your enemy uses so many means to get to you. But if you don't know what they are doing to you, you cannot recover from it. It takes discovery to make you recover. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Turn your Bible to um, 1 Samuel chapter 17. Give me verse 8. First Samuel chapter 17, verse 8. Then he stood and cried out to the army of Israel and said unto them, Why have you come out to land up for battle? Am I not a Philistine? And you, the servant of Saul, Choose a man for yourself and let him come down to me. Go down. I'm going to spend a little time on this. What's the next one say? If, if he's able to fight me and kill me, then we will be your servant. But if I prevailed against him and kill him, then you shall be our servant and serve us. This was a battle between the army of God and that of the Philistine. Saul and his soldiers were on the other side of the mountain. And the Philistines were also on the other side of the mountain. And there was a valley before them. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that there was this guy called Goliath. That the children of Israel. The information they received concerning this man. It brought them in a position of defeat. What you hear have an impact on your life. Because I heard that this guy been fighting battles from the youthful days. And it referred to him as a champion. Misinformation. They referred to him as, as a champion. So the Bible says he will come often and defy the army of the living God. But listen to me. Because it make them to feel that they are the army of Saul. They did not recognize their position in God. Hallelujah. Goliath gave them an information that brought fear. And fear is one of the weapons of the devil. 
Many of us today, the reason why we are so afraid is because of the misinformation that we are receiving. People are telling you you cannot make it in life. And you say to yourself, you cannot make it in life. People are telling you you are good for nothing. And you are saying it around that my mom or stepmom told me that I am good for nothing. That's some misinformation. Because the thing is, it is not what God has said about you. Because what God says about you is final. So Goliath came on and made them feel that they were the army of Saul. But while they were going back and forth with the battle, and it came to the place and left, they left their position from being on the mountain and they found themselves in the valley. Hallelujah. Every one of us belong on the mountain. It's not in the valley. They left their place and found themselves in the valley. Hallelujah. And when Goliath saw they were in the valley and he was in a better position, he came and defeated them every day and night. And could do anything about it. And when Goliath speak, everyone gets afraid. Hallelujah. When Goliath speak, everyone gets timid. They don't, they don't even think the God it belongs to. Or in their mind that this God been fighting for years now. And he is a champion. There is no way that we can defeat him. There is no way that we can overcome him. And when Goliath saw they had fear, he defied them all. But why they were in the process of allowing Goliath to defy them. There was a guy in the back here that God had anointed, that God had given information to, be, to take away the reproach of Israel. Hallelujah. The one that was despised, the one that was rejected. Oh my God, oh my God. Listen to me. There are many of us that don't want people to reject you. Oh my God, I like people to despise me. I like people to reject me. You know why? Because when you reject me, then God will pick me up. Hallelujah. He was in the park. God will prepare him for that day. Hallelujah. And this time around, his father told him to take bread to his brothers. And when the brothers saw him, hallelujah, they began to get angry with him. When you are doing good in life, many people get angry with you. Listen, I say this word to my people every time. Prophet, if nobody hates you, that means nothing good is happening for you. I'm telling you serious thing. That's how I determine something is happening for me. If I hear my name in the community, I know I'm doing S+. Plus. Hallelujah. It is not time to cry when people turn against you. It's time to rejoice because something spectacular is happening. Something powerful is happening. Something great is happening. Something excellent is happening. Hallelujah. If is happening for you, nobody will be the king sure because they are certified that nothing is happening. When David got there, the brother went to David and said to David, What brought you over here? You let our father sheep and came over here. What brought you? And not because of pride, that's why you have come. Was it a wrong thing for David to ask for price? If you know what belongs to you. And when you begin to speak it, they will think you're proud. You are not proud. I'm telling you, in your family, you may stand up and say, I'll be a bank executive. You will hear somebody say, what time? Just so that you keep it quiet. I know the time concerning my life. And when that time comes, you will see me in that position. Hallelujah! David asked them over and over. And the guys, the Bible 
Bible said they rehearse it. The gods he spoke to, they rehearse what David said. And while they were saying and speaking, David ordered bread again. Hallelujah. You see, Goliath was looking for a man that would defeat him. But you see, the children of Asia that was in the valley, they were not a man to defeat him. In every generation, God is looking for a man. Hallelujah. In your family, God is looking for a man. It can be a female man or a male man. But God is looking for a man that will bring solution to the family. And say you are that person. You are that person. You are that person. Generation is depending on you. Your family is depending on you. Society and nation is depending on you. Because you are a man that God has chosen. That is the reason why you are seated here today. You could be out there, but you are here because you are chosen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. David asked for the prize. He said, David, he said, there'll be exemption of taxes upon the house of wood that will kill this guy. Besides, his beloved daughter. He's going to give her to you, to whoever killed the guy. When David received the information, he knew that what had been said is something that God could bring to pass in his life. No matter what the discouragement of his brother, you know, in life, it's a dangerous thing that you would never want to happen to you is to find your own siblings rising up against you. It brings you in a stage of confusion that you cannot, you, you cannot get around it. It wasn't far off, it was within. You see, there are battles within and there are battles without. So you see, we need to receive a lot of information about battles so you can know how to fight the battles. Are you understand what I'm saying? Because people that you'll be nice to, they are the same people destroying you. Hallelujah. The same person you explain your dream and vision to, they are the one that want to put you in the pit. They are the one. But listen to me. David knew that Goliath, that's information David got. David knew that Goliath wasn't a man because he was uncircumcised. A child cannot defy a man. Hallelujah. Goliath was below eight years old because he wasn't circumcised. So in his army did not have that information. Goliath David also understood that the battle is a battle of God. It is not a battle of man. He was asking for a man. But David knew it was God that needed the battle to God that needed, that needed to fight the battle. So when David got there, David said, Who is this unsacrificed Philistine that Divide the army of the living God. David did not look at himself as the army of Saul. He looked at himself as the army of the living God. Identify your position in God. Your position in God, La Basanto, is greater than your enemies. Your position in God has a propensity, a audacity to turn your life around. Your position in God can bring the enemy to a standstill. Your position in God can open divine heaven over your life. Uh, hallelujah, somebody. They had a position in God. He knew the battle was the battle of God. So he was not the army of Saul. He was the army of the living God. So he said, who is this man that can defy the army of Yahweh? The Yahweh God. You cannot stand before him. No one can stand before him. Hallelujah. He's a mighty man of war. He's a mighty man of battle. Hallelujah. 
He's the one that fight for you. He's the one that fight for us. Now the Bible says that our weapons of warfare are not kind of, but it are matter through God to the putting down of strongholds. Only God can put down strongholds. If you believe they're going to say hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Not to keep us here. So David understood. Now, information. Prophet, his brother came not knowing the information that he had. So they look at him from the brother's standpoint. So David came. Then David went to Saul. So let's take David to Saul. Let David explain himself. And David began to speak. And Saul did not understood what David was saying. Then David gave them an example. He said, if you don't know this God, I know him well. You see, what brings miracle is remembrance. <laughs> Many of us don't remember what God has done for us. David said, you don't know. You wearing around when I had my own personal encounter. But I saw God coming down in his own power. He allowed me to kill the bear and the lion. If that God can do it, ah, the same God can give me this on second side, Felician. I can cut his head off. Oh, so I don't need your breastplates. I don't need any shoes. I don't need any sword. And only need God. The battle you are fighting, you only need God. You don't need no man. You don't need no man. You don't need your dad. You don't need your mom. You only need God. Because only God can bring victory. No matter what sickness is, the devil brought upon you, only God can heal you. No doctor can heal you. Who report will you believe? Do not the last repose. Hallelujah. Somebody, he allowed me to kill the lion and the bear with my bare hands. My bare hands. No one was there. And I killed the bear. La Pasata. And the same girl is not there. The same girl is alive. Yes, the Yahweh God. La Bosanta. The Lord is giving victory in your hands. The Lord is giving victory in your hands. The Lord is giving victory in your hands. Hallelujah. I've been too long. The enemy has tracked you too much. He is turning it around. The Lord turning it around. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. David said, This man, I can kill him. Hallelujah. Because I know my God. Hallelujah. It is knowledge that makes you strong. The Bible says, they that know their God. You see, they know it means knowledge. Those knowledge of their God will be strong and do what? Explosive. Hallelujah. David, look at 47. Oh my God. Is that 47 of the same first Samuel? For the seven says, and all this assembly shall know. Shall what? Shall know. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saved not with sword, spear. For the battle is the Lord, and he will give it into your hands. Ah. 
into your hands. That's a good news. You see the understanding that David had? Saul and his men was depending on the sword, the horses and chariot, the skills and talent, the few they could defeat Goliath. But David had another information that Saul and his men were lacking. So when David was asking for the price, he was asking for the price according to this scripture. Because he had understood that this battle will be given into his hands. Into his hands. Stand on your feet. Into his hands. Into his hands. Into his hands. He said, oh, this assembly, oh, those that were against me, oh, that bite bite me, oh, that castigated me, oh, that ostracized me, Oh, that reject me. We see. Oh my God. We see. The Lord. We see. The Lord will open their eyes. And they will see. That the battle. The victory is given. Into my hands. Amen. Glory. Praise glory. the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, Radado Sunday. Radado Sunday. Limo Corado Sintoria. Jata Radado Sita Radado. Mata Radada Shiki. Oh, my God. If you need the touch of God, just come in the front. Come in the front so the Lord can give your victory in your hands. Lema Karana Zindi Sandalabaye Murababosa Talabaka Sandai Yelema Zando Reki Alama Jendo Sitarababo. Yes, Lord. The glory of the Lord is here. Yes, yes. Mm. Hallelujah. Oh, please. Are you, Lord? Oh, creation. Yes. Call you, God. Yes. <laughs> Worthy. It's your name. We worship. <laughs> awesome God. How great thou art. You are God. Mark us. Something is up. A miracle. <laughs> we stand in no, yes, we stand yes, yes. on your own name. La la basta. Le mo si torre a chica. Le mo se celebre kis ki torre. Yes. Father, right now. You found an unclean spirit. I come against you in the name of the Lord. I command you to lose your horse right now. Right now. Lose your grip. Lose your horse and grips. And come out of all. Right now. Uh huh. Uh huh. In the name of Jesus. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Yes, yes, yes. Just close your eyes. Spirit of the living God. That is Santa. 
Yes. Yes, yes that's it. Take it. That's it. Ah, yes, that's it. That's the power. Lose her. Lose her. Let her go now. Now. Yes, In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Yes, the battle is not yours. It's the Lord. It's the Lord. Uh -huh. That's the power. It's the power of God. It's touching. The Lord is all over this place. Something is happening. Receive it now. Uh -huh. Oh, the Lord is giving you victory. Uh -huh. Oh my God. 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 Lose her and let her go. I come against you in the name of the Lord. I break your powers in the name of Jesus. Lose her. No matter what. The battle is the Lord. Yes. Remember God. The battle is the Lord. He's here. He's touching. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Receive it. That's the touch of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Ah. Oh, it's so strong, Mama. Take it. 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 Oh, the battle is the Lord. You have been crying. The Lord is wiping your tears. Amen. Oh, yes. Take it. Take it. Take it. Uh huh. Uh huh. That's it. That's it. It's all over you. That's the power of God. He's touching you. Yes, today it must come to an end. In the name of Jesus, receive it. Receive it. That's the power of God. It's all over you now. Take it. Take it. Take it. It's the Lord's that Jesus can heal, and there is no sorrow that He cannot feel. For all things work according.
you're going through. Remember God is using you for this battle. It's not yours. It's the Lord's. No matter what you're going through, the battle to the Lord. This battle is not yours. This battle is not yours. This battle is not yours, but it belongs to the Lord. It's not yours. It belongs Do not pass us by. 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 Do not p
pass us by. for his servant, Pastor George, for that Amen. powerful word tonight. That timing word, it was timing. That word was timing for us. Amen. I want you to understand, people of God, information is very important. Yes. When Satan entered the Garden of Eden, the first thing he went for was for information. Mm. Did God tell you not to eat this? Satan wanted information. Ask Eve, did God really tell you not to eat this? And she said, God tells us not to eat. He said, no, the day you eat, you will be like God. Information. When people come close to life or they come close to you, they are looking for information. Amen. Amen. The information you give about yourself will make you to live or to die. Because it is information that the devil wants. The devil don't know anything about you until you inform him what is happening to you. Whenever the enemy wants to destroy you, they look for information. Yes. There are so many information that the enemy is using against the church. Who gave the enemy the information? The church. You see, if Something was not going to inform Delilah that his hair was his strength. Something vision was never going to be plucked out. Some of you, the information that you are giving people, that's what they are using against you. That's the reason why that, you know, certain leaders are not supposed to talk certain things. Many of us, we talk too much, give too much information. And by the time you look, your information you give your best friend is on Facebook. This time, the devil don't have to ask for information. 
All the devil know to go on Facebook and take information from them. The wish that I don't need to go anywhere is to find information just on Facebook. Oh my goodness. Awful message tonight. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. Stop, stop giving, giving. importing Import. information Import. about your life to the one next to you. <laughs> Don't tell them anything about you. Be careful. You never know who's sitting by you. Be careful what to say to that person. I'm so serious. It's information that transforms people. So if the most important information that God will give you, it transform you. But there are some information that will deform you. Amen. So that it transform you, it deform you. Amen. Look at your neighbor. Say, don't say it oh. Amen. So, people of God, I want to know this. Let us start giving negative information to people about our church. I, I, I've seen it in the spirit too much. I'm seeing it, it hurt a whole lot. Because information will cause you to be deformed, discourage you, make you reluctant. So, we got to try. Amen. That's the reason why, I'm not preaching another message, but that's the reason why when the lady in the Bible lost her son, 2 Kings chapter 6, when the boy died, the neighbor never knew that the boy was there. Even the husband asked her, it is well, she said, it is well. I don't need to tell you my son is there. The neighbor came and asked her, why are you going to see the prophet? It is well, she said, it is well. Amen. I don't care how the level of your pain in life. When somebody asks you, it is well, tell them it is well. Because somebody want to carry your information that you're sick. There's something wrong with you. When it comes to this, it is well. Know who to talk to. Amen. Go to your prayer room, talk to Jesus. Jesus is not going to spray everywhere. Just talk to him. Or talk to your pastor that you trust. Amen. Your pastor that you trust in Jesus' mighty name. And I, I, I'm saying to the say that my wife, I bless the Lord for her so much. Amen. When, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, you know, I, I, I let her ear drop on uh, conversation, but, you know, I can't get it. I don't know how she, you know, do it. I tell her I'll pray and go show me. But the truth is that when, when she get off the phone, I ask her, what was that? I say, it's not for you. This one up for you. Amen. She keep information so powerful. And that's how it should be. She's your prophet. That God revealed to me, but this one not for you. I'm like, I'm your husband. Yeah, but this not for you. Amen. She can be trusted. I'm telling you, this woman of God, she can be really trusted beyond trust. I'm telling you the truth. Jesus, mother. Yeah, yeah, I'm serious. Even I, her husband, she don't share some things with me. And I'd be curious to know. She said, hey, you prophet, go pray, but this one is not for you. So then I said the information. Someone oh, we talk too much. You're not even sure if that guy going to marry you. Then you give me your whole information to him. And some information about you will scare somebody. <laughs> Some of the things you say will scare somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Will scare somebody. So know who to talk to. In Jesus' mighty name, know who to what? Talk to. The enemy use information to disrupt people's lives. So the message was powerful tonight for us. Glad to hear and all of that. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you enjoyed this message tonight, I want you to sow into the man of God's life. Not less than the 40 dollars. Because 40, he preached about the 40 generations. The 400 years that the children of Israel was in captivity. For so if I were you sensible in the spirit, you look for four.